Recently I made a video about the cultus of the Lovecraft mythos. It was a good video I think but afterwards something came to mind that I should have included. How exactly are the cultus and others communicating with or getting information about the great old ones? Especially since I doubt that they have the Necronomicon or Unausprechlichen Kulten in pamphlet form to distribute for information purposes. Lovecraft always stressed the value of dreams and their roles on us as humans. He pointed out his actual real world belief many times in his stories. Flip open most of his tales and you'll see some narrator plagued by dreams which turn out to be true to some degree. But are the dreams in these stories he wrote really the means by which the great old ones are actively, knowingly using to communicate with us? For example, is Great Cthulhu influencing the dreams of humans to help him wake from his underwater city of Alia? Well, it seems that there is no doubt that it is the presence, at least, of the Great Old Ones which acts as a catalyst to the dark dreams some have. The Call of Cthulhu makes it clear that the stirrings of Cthulhu and Arlia are in line with the sudden rise of mental disturbances and dreams of a sensitive few people and cults around the world. However, it doesn't really sit well with me that some entity like Cthulhu, something so great, is going to sit helplessly in Arlia trying to telepathically get us humans to assist him, or that any entity of his level or greater will do something like that. They aren't vampires, you know, enamored with the idea of messing with us humans as playthings. Well, there's Neolathotep, but that's a completely different story. So I've come up with an idea, and it's not one I can directly link to any of Lovecraft's writings or notes or anything like that. It's purely my own idea. I find a much more satisfying answer in, for lack of a better term, radiation. I don't mean Chernobyl glow-in-the-dark radiation, but more like something sharing some of its traits. This is how I imagine humans to be affected by the great old ones. Radiation, as you note, is invisible but has negative effects on life, to say the least. Now, the way I see it is that the mere existence of the Great Old Ones is enough to affect humans. What if it is the case that the Great Old Ones and perhaps other lesser entities emit something, either knowingly or unknowingly, some sort of magnetic field or radiation or some such invisible force that has some effects on humanity, or at least some people in humanity, causing some to dream, some to become deranged, or some to just go mad. I say that it's probably unknowingly that they do it because what do they care about us? What do they care about influencing us? What are we to them? Thus, it could be that they emit this quote-unquote radiation or energy like we naturally emit body heat. If we stick with my radiation theory, it could simply be that these individuals, the cultists and the sensitive few dreamers around the world, have the mental sensitivity to be affected by the radiation put out by the great old ones maybe not even in the sense of some hyper developed pineal gland in the brain like in the lovecraft story from beyond but simply being more sensitive able to pick up on something most people cannot or maybe it is like in from beyond perhaps some people are just born with a slightly larger or more sensitive pineal gland in the head just like some people are born with a longer finger than normal my radiation theory works especially well with the story the color out of space there, a meteorite crashes into the farm of the Gardner family, and from then on, the food grown, the animals, and eventually the people exposed to the meteorite begin to change and degenerate. While the effects are supernatural, of course, in the story, it is very easy to imagine that the meteorite was highly radioactive, and that the effects on the family are from radiation poisoning. I don't mean literal radiation as we know it, but the sort of supernatural radiation, shall we say. But what about the smell? Regularly, Lovecraft writes of the stench produced by the Great Old Ones and similar entities. By their smell shall you know them, he writes in The Dunwich Horror. Could it be that the odor of these entities plays a role in affecting us humans? And while that all humans can smell them, some are affected by it more than others in different ways. But in the end, radiation or smell or odor, it still serves the same purpose in explaining how even if a Great Old One is dead, or as dead as they can be, it can still somehow emit something by merely existing as a physical object. And as to how cultists are getting the information or beliefs they do, well, as I stated, cultists are human and are prone to error and their own personal interpretations of things that they see and experience in life. If we look at the story Lovecraft helped to write the horror in the museum, I think we can see a good example to explore my theory a little bit more here. In that story, there is a lesser creature, nowhere near the levels of a yog sothoth or Cthulhu, called Ran Tegoth. The human figures which come into play in the story are Jones and Rogers. Rogers plays the role of the cultist and Jones is our protagonist. While there are ample mentions of feverish dreams, the two men are affected very differently. 
Jones manages to only see the horror and disgust in Rantegoth and a desire to destroy it, while Rogers is driven into madness, calling himself its high priest and worshipping it. Perhaps Lovecraft wasn't being dramatic. Perhaps it really is true that cultists are of lesser, weaker minds and thus are drawn into worship or madness, whereas stronger minds are resistant and disgusted by the horrors of the mythos. There is a passage in the horror in the museum which may highlight my point that I'm trying to make and also may prove that Lovecraft also had the same thought. It goes like this. As Jones stood hesitating, the speaker had returned to his desk and took out the photograph he had laid face down without showing. Now he extended it with a curious look. Jones took it and glanced at it in an almost mechanical way. After a moment the visitor's glance became sharper and more absorbed, for the utterly satanic force of that object depicted had an almost hypnotic effect. Certainly Rogers had outdone himself in modelling the eldritch nightmare which the camera had caught. The thing was a work of sheer infernal genius and Jones wondered how the public would react when it was placed on exhibition. So hideous a thing had no right to exist. Probably the mere contemplation of it after it was done had completed the unhinging of its maker's mind and led him to worship it with brutal sacrifices. Only a stout sanity could resist the insidious suggestion that the blasphemy was, or had once been, some morbid and exotic form of actual life. Rogers and Jones presumably, if my theory is correct, are both exposed to the suggestion or the quote-unquote radiation given off by Rantegoth, yet it is Rogers who develops these crazy fanatical ideas. It's coming from him all from Rogers himself. Excuse my edgelord atheism here, but a real world example would be how sometimes you see these statues apparently crying and then religious people flock to it and add all their human interpretations to it and what they want it to mean, basically. And it turns out some arsehole just left the sink running upstairs, you know, and the water was dripping down the statue. Or you can look at perhaps one of the more primitive cultures back in history where there was a, an eclipse or something and it was taken to be a sign of the end times or something like this. Whereas in reality it was just planetary bodies blocking the sunlight from each other. Humans can be like this. It's all in their head that more is happening than really is. I think it's perfectly rational to say that Cthulhu may be unknowingly or even knowingly but maybe unknowingly emitting some sort of force by merely existing as a corpse in Arlia, but some crazy humans might think, oh, we've been called by this great being this, that nobody else can sense it. We are special and chosen. We are greater than all of other humans. We are going to sacrifice and fight for Cthulhu. Oh, we're going to interpret that, that in the end times we are going to be elevated amongst the crowd. It's very human to think something like that. As I said, this is merely my hypothesis. I'm not basing it off of any idea or note of Lovecraft or any Lovecraft scholar like S.T. Joshi. The only weight to my idea that makes credible, I think, is that it works as an explanation, I think at least. And add to that, and this is really speculation, perhaps Lovecraft, the ever curious admirer of science and discoveries, may have learned of the discovery of radiation in 1896 yeah, just six years after he was born, but he started reading about science and such as a boy. So what do you think about all of this? If my idea doesn't work, how do you think that the humans and the great old ones are able to communicate? Where are the humans getting these dreams from? What explains it all? Are the great old ones truly trying to manipulate humanity or is it simply a byproduct of them being near us? Thanks must especially go to those who commented on my cultist video. This is what I really like about our community. We interact a lot in the comment sections. I know I make the videos and I post them, but I learn a lot from you guys and I consider perspectives I wouldn't have considered before. So that's what I really think sets our channel apart from all the other channels out there. I try my best to answer all the questions that have been posted, but as the channel grows, it becomes harder and harder. So forgive me if I've missed your post. Anyway, that's all I've got for this video. Let me know what you think about this radiation idea. Is it bullshit or does there have some weight to it? Does it make sense? Let me know. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the comment section later on. Cheers. Extending upward to an infinitely high vaulted dome of indescribable splendor.